Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. I'm Captain Lim from the Flight Deck. Please fasten your seat belts. If you have not, we are going to get airborne shortly, and I hope you're going to enjoy your flight with me today. Have you heard of the woman who was trying to open the um, cockpit door and the cabin door in flight because she wanted to smoke a cigarette? Well, she, it was reported that she was a fearful flyer. She has just taken alcohol and she has just taken a sleeping tablet. Proud to her flight from Hong Kong to Brisbane, she was observed to be trying to open the uh, door, trying to open the uh, cockpit door, uh, the cabin door in flight. But she was stopped by the flight attendant when she arrived at uh, Brisbane. She was arrested by the police. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to worry in case any crazy woman or a crazy guy decide to open the uh, cockpit, uh, the cabin door um, in flight because it is not possible. This is because the door is designed in such a way that you cannot push it out. Furthermore, the um, pressure in the cabin gets higher and higher as you climb up and the pressure will compress against the door. No one can ever open the door in flight except when the aircraft lands or depressurized, whereby you see the flight attendant, when the aircraft lands, she will have to unlock the door first, pull it in, and then push it out. So, even though you cannot open the door in flight, please do not try it. <laughs> or you'll be arrested by the police on arrival at your destination. Not many people know why sometimes your food don't taste good in the aircraft. <laughs> in fact, uh, one passenger asked me, hey, why my tea tastes funny in the aircraft or in flight? Well, I tell you why. As you climb higher and higher, the air pressure gets lower and lower. Instead of your water boiling at 100 degrees, water will boil at 90 degrees. And that interferes with your brewing of your tea. That's why your tea tastes funny. And as a matter of interest, I tell you, if you are in the, on top of Mount Everest, you cannot make a hard boiled egg. You know why? The temperature at top of Mount Everest is only 69 degrees Celsius. To make a hard boiled egg, hard boiled egg, you require up to a, tem a temperature of 85. So sorry, you cannot have hard boiled egg if you are in on uh, top of Mount Everest. Not only that, as the aircraft climbs higher and higher your sense of smell and the sense of taste is also affected. No wonder sometimes people complain, food in aircraft don't taste very good because your senses are affected. My daughter, when she comes back from London, she always complains she has difficulty adjusting to the jet lag. I have to explain to her, any traveller that moves through many time zones in a in a day rapidly will be affected by the jet lag. Why? Because your natural body clock cannot get synchronized with your circadian rhythm. Okay? Circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is basically a 24-hour clock in the body that determines when you sleep, when you wake up, and it's affected by sunlight and temperature. So when your circadian rhythm is out, your system goes haywire. It affects your sleeping pattern and uh, no wonder you, a, a person with jet lag will feel drowsy, irritated, irritable, tired, lethargic and uh, partially disorientated. You cannot entirely prevent jet lag but you can manage it by arranging a flight such that uh, 
you have enough rest before you fly. Choose a day flight if possible. And um, avoid taking alcohol because that will aggravate your jet lag. Drink plenty of water. Passengers sometimes ask me, how safe is, uh, how safe is flying? I often uh, convince them flying is safe. If you look at this uh, graph here, during the last 37 years, flying is becoming safer and safer. And uh, in terms of passenger distance calculation, flying is the safest form of transportation. It is six times safer than driving. I know, some of you may disagree with what I have said and probably ask, so how safe is safe? Now, let me explain it in this way. The safest airline in the world is an airline that has lots of aircraft, but aircraft doesn't take off. You stay on the ground. And according to uh, Wilbur Wright, the inventor of the first aeroplane, he says, if you're looking for perfect safety, you might as well sit on the ground and watch the bird flies. <laughs> and now, uh, Captain, uh, Captain Sully, he was the hero of um, the Hudson River crash, where he saved 155 lives, he says. We must not define safety as an absence of accident. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, everything we do in life involves some degree of risk. Going to the supermarket, crossing the road, climbing up the staircase, or even having a shower, each of these events has its own degree of risk. And flying is just that little risk. I feel safer flying than driving to uh, work. Now, let me ask you one question. How many of you know how many people are killed on the road each day in Malaysia? Anybody got an answer? According to World Health Organization, 20 people are killed on the road each day in Malaysia. 20. And that comes out around 7,000. 500 people are killed on the road each year. Sometimes when you are flying in a cruise, you hear announcement from the captain. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We'll be entering some severe turbulence. Please return to your seat and fasten your seat belt. So what is air turbulence? Are turbulence dangerous? Let me explain to you turbulence. Turbulence is just like you driving along a smooth road in a car and then you get diverted onto a small lane with potholes and bumps. The car starts to shake. It's not dangerous. As long as your seatbelt is fastened and the um, car slows down. Okay? And sometimes people loosely describe turbulence as though you are on a, a roller coaster ride. In turbulence, if you look out at the windscreen, you can see on the window, you can see the wings flex a little. The engine shakes a bit. Do not be alarmed. Because the, the wings are incredibly strong, it can withstand up to 150% of the strongest force that you can ever experience in the air. The wings will not drop off. The engine will not drop off as well. You do not have to worry because turbulence is only a nuisance to the passenger and as well as the pilots. When the captain experiences turbulence, you will climb up to a smoother level or to a lower level. So, turbulence is only an issue of discomfort, not safety. During my flying career, I get a lot of friends who ask me questions like, uh, do you have any uh, unforgettable flying moment to share. In fact, I have a lot, but I just share with you one. It happened in Shanghai during an approaching typhoon. An angry passenger was very, very upset with me for dealing with the flight and making them wait at the lounge, asking me why passengers on the uh, adjoining lounge can depart on a Boeing 777, similar to mine, the aircraft that I flew, whilst I refused to take off. 
I have to explain to them, uh, an approaching typhoon comes with very strong wind. Not only that, on that day, it was a very strong crosswind. Someone asked me, what is a crosswind? Crosswind is just any wind that blows across the runway. And as you can see on the picture, you see, a strong crosswind can easily blow the aircraft off the runway during takeoff and landing. So, during that period, after a short while, the tense atmosphere ceased as soon as we heard over the radio that the Shanghai Tower was closing down the airport because of the typhoon. And we could see um, a Boeing 747 turning back, followed by an Airbus A340, the aircraft that I flew. At that moment, I felt a sense of vindication for having stood firm in not giving to the demand of the angry passenger. The safety of my passenger was of utmost importance, and I wasn't going to take any chances against it. Because I remember many years back, uh, my doctor friend, he told me, hey, Captain, your responsibility is higher than me as a doctor. He told me person personally that when I make a mistake or when a doctor makes a mistake, only one life affected. If I make a mistake, a lot of people will be affected. And at that moment, I felt I was duty-bound to fly my passengers professionally, morally, to its destination as safe as I could. And in all honesty, I would rather be known as a live chicken than a dead hero. And during my flying career, there are lots of funny questions. Uh, some frequent questions such as, why cabin lights are dim during takeoff and landing? Simple. It's for safety reason. Enable your eyes to be fully adapted to the nightlife, that night light. In the event of an emergency evacuation, you jump onto the slides rather than onto a dark hole. And of course, there are other questions such as, um, such as um, why, like uh, what happened during a lightning strike? Nothing, nothing really serious will happen. <laughs> I know some of you are afraid of lightning strike, but nothing will happen. The engine will not fail. Okay. The electrical charges will just flow smoothly, harmlessly, exit to the static discharges. And then there are questions. People ask, hey, what are Mayday calls? Mayday calls are basically uh, spoken three times in a row when a captain or aircraft in an emergency. Example, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Sweetbird, one, two, three. I have an engine on fire. Request priority landing. So when the air traffic controller hears this, he will clear all the aircraft of the airways and the airfield and allow you to land first. And the reason why they choose this word, Mayday, is because it cannot be mistaken by any other similar sounding word. And uh, it was coined by a radio officer many years back because Mayday in French means, please help me. Uh, all these stories I've just told you are a collection from uh, my website, which I have developed 15 years ago for the benefit of passenger. One asked me, how come a village boy, a kampong boy like me, was able to uh, become a pilot and went on to fly the Boeing 777, the Airbus A330 and Airbus 340? Indeed, I was a kampong boy um, from poor family. I stayed at that house. My father was, uh, could not read or write. He was a carpenter. And when I was young, um, my dream was very simple. I only wanted to be a teacher, uh, not a pilot. But the opportunity came along when I left school. The Royal Malaysian Air Force was uh, looking for pilots. I applied. I was successful. They uh, sent me to the uh, Royal Military College and also England for my flying training. Again, someone asked, how come a poor a village boy was able to afford the expensive flying training? Simple. If you join the Air Force, if they select you, training was provided to me for free. 
Before I went to the military college, I was required to sign a consent letter from my parents that uh, they do not object me to become a pilot. But do you know in the Canadians there is a saying, good son should not join the army. And I wasn't that good son because if I were to tell them the truth, I would not be a pilot today. And being a pilot today is no longer as easy as before because of the limited vacancies uh, of around. However, if you become a pilot, anyone of you become a pilot, you must also consider some issues such as, will uh, becoming a pilot be a stressful job? Will you be around during your son's graduation? Will your wife uh, worry that you'll be away, nice stopping overseas with lots of pretty girls? Of course, there are some advantages being a pilot. You get to travel a lot of places, you see the world, and um, you get to know many other people, and of course, the income is quite generous. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time I draw my talk to a close by uh, quoting Abraham Lincoln. He says, in the end, it is not the years in your life that counts, but it is a life in your years. So even though I am 70 years old, coming up 70 years old, I got five grandchildren, I would like to make a difference to all the younger generation by providing them the knowledge to fight against their fear or any aspect of aviation caused by ignorance and misinformation. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is the antidote and cure for your fear of flying. And before anyone asks me this last question, what is the difference between a pilot and an aviator? According to uh, Captain Jefferson, a pilot is a technician. An aviator is an artist in love with flight. Ladies and gentlemen, you can disembark from this flight now. Thank you.